Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you the latest progress on Dread, specifically with the level editor. I've put a lot of thought into how to streamline the level editing process, not just for players like yourself who want to create levels of your own, but also for me to be able to create the expansive story campaign that I have planned for the game. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go through and make a quick level for you to show off some of the new features of the level editor. Biggest one being how easy it is to draw out a level. It's very easy to quickly create whatever kind of level you want to make uh, and whatever kind of layout you want. So let's even that up a little bit. All right, so let's make uh, let's make this the player starting area. So I'm going to go up here and then to the menu and select the objects menu. The biggest thing about the objects menu now is that it has information about what each object is, uh, some of the things that can be done with it, as well as some of the hotkeys for specific objects like walls, for example. Or, I mean, excuse me, doors, for example. Uh, you can change their orientation, you can change their color to make them locked, that you have to collect a specific key, so on and so forth. So right now I'm just going to grab the player and stick him right there. And it's also very easy to play test your level now. All you have to do is go up here and hit play. And voila, it drops you right in. So this level right now is pretty bland. There's not really anything going on. And we can actually leave the level and go out into the off expansive unknown that exists around the outside of the level. Um, so let's go back and change a few things. Specifically, we're going to add some doors. So you can see here, we've got uh, the door that we can rotate. Let's stick a door there. Uh, let's stick another door here, but let's go ahead and make it, actually, let's make it red. So let's delete that door and stick a red door there. Uh, let's also go up here to the options menu and give ourselves a red key. Uh, let's give us, uh, well, let's build out the level a little more, shall we? Let's take this and make it a hallway. And we're going to make it open up into a great big room. Uh, yeah, let's delete that little nub there. And let's make this kind of a funky room, just for fun. Let's add some random wall shapes in here, just to make it difficult to see what exactly the room layout is when we're playing it. Uh, we're also going to stick a couple of enemies in here and these enemies, unlike with the old pre-alpha of Dread, uh, they wander around <laughs> so they're not always going to be right here. They're going to just wander about and make it kind of difficult for us to be able to tell exactly where they are. We have to listen for them, watch out for them. And of course they also have a view cone now, so we can sneak by them if they're looking the other direction. And we can also lose them, so if they're chasing us, we can run and hide, uh, run around these uh, different objects or walls and, and try and lose them. And if we do lose them, they'll just go back to wandering around the level again. And we can try and sneak by them again, or if we have weapons, we can just kill them and call it good. Uh, let's go ahead and make uh, a secret area. Why not? Let's add some more walls into this. But this little secret area is only going to be accessible by destroying a wall. Because now if we hover over walls, you can see that they have in, uh, some properties to them. For example, durability. Uh, the walls by default are infinite durability, but we can change that. So let's go in here and change their wall properties. Uh, let's uncheck infinite, but one is a, uh, a little too low. And of course, a thousand is a little too high. So let's put somewhere in the middle. Let's give it, um, let's give it, not even in the middle. Let's put it at five. That's nice, small, easy. Yeah, we can shoot the wall a few times and it, it'll break for us. So we'll save that and uh, let's go ahead and give this level a shot. It's real easy to drop in, like I said, and it saves where your the last things that you did in the level editor. So let's collect this red key. We're going to go up here. 
Now, being the developer, I of course given myself some cheats, for example. I've given myself a pistol with a thousand rounds of ammo, so these zombies aren't really going to be much of a challenge. So we're going to open it up, and uh, the zombie actually wandered up to the door on his own, but fortunately when I opened it, he was looking the wrong way, so he wandered off. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, one of the zombies found us. So if I shut this door on the zombie's face, he's going to sit there for a little while, and then he's going to decide that he can't get to me and go off and wander off on his own again. So let's go back out here. Oh, oh man. All right. Let's shoot these guys. <laughs> All right. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. So <laughs> that's a pretty challenging level already. Uh, so now you can see how the fog of war really shines. It uh, lets us see areas that we've seen uh, while keeping areas that we haven't seen hidden. So we're not exactly sure what the level layout is until we've actually explored it. Uh, so, or <laughs> in our case, if we've created it. So there's no indication here that there's a secret room right here. The only way that we know is by creating it. So let's go ahead and shoot that wall. There we go. And that opened it up into this secret room that has nothing in it. That was a very uh, <laughs> anticlimactic secret. But it allows us to do quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, durability that affects whether a wall is, is present or not. Uh, you can also create switches that when you activate them, it'll hide walls like this so that you can access areas. And of course you can also have contact triggers and things like that where, let's say I could put a contact trigger here, that as soon as I touch it going by, it would hide this wall. Uh, of course, I wouldn't know it until I went back and actually saw that the wall was hidden. But that's just one option for creating secret areas or you know, level advancement things. And there's all kinds of things that you can do with that. I'm really, really big on the emergent gameplay aspect of games. So I wanted to make Dread as open-ended as possible and, and allow players to pretty much do anything they wanted within this engine. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to our level. It's very simple, but uh, to show off some of the emergent gameplay possibilities, I'm going to load up a level that I created a little while ago. Let's see if you can recognize this level as I wander around a little bit. I guess you could say it's a throwback to some of my old uh, emergent gameplay uh, fun that I had a couple of years ago. I guess it's only been a year. Let's see. Oh, I saw a ghost. Uh, excuse me, zombie. Oh, there's several. Alright, running away. Run, 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 run. Now this level, it's uh, significantly easier to uh, run away from and hide. Uh oh, not that way. From our ghost zombie and I'm not going to go through and actually collect all of the uh, mag oh jeez oh that that yep run away so yeah I'm not going to go with it ah oh yep yep <laughs> it's a good thing I've got myself set up with so much health I definitely would have died right there anyway I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'm really looking forward to having this released here. Uh, my deadline is September 15th. That's when I'm going to have the alpha released in, I suppose you could say, whatever state it happens to be in. But currently, it's on track to be what I want it to be. Uh, it's not going to have the expansive storyline that I was talking about yet, but that is coming. So again, thank you for watching, and... Uh, Hope you have fun with this.